Hello everyone. And this is slightly advanced vellum. So in the previous lesson, I had covered the basics of it. And one of the main things that needed to be figured out by me was uh, how do you break constraints or how do you even form constraints over time? Uh, and uh, firstly, I need to thank somebody for this. So I was sent an email by uh, Alexander Weed. I'm, okay, I, I think I'm screwing up his name, but <laughs> and I apologize. But he sent me uh, he sent me a file which was essentially uh, how to animate constraints or breaking of constraints over time, and then he also sent me this other file by Tim Van Helsdingen. And which was essentially about uh, how to use attributes to break constraints over time. So essentially doing like an attribute transfer. So those two files really helped out. So big thanks to, you know, uh, for sending me those files. And what we're going to cover is we're going to cover about four different topics. So we'll cover uh, how to break constraints uh, by a simple animation. We'll take a look at how to break constraints via attribute transfer. And uh, then we'll see how to make constraints dynamically over time. And then lastly, we'll take a look at a slightly more complex setup. Uh, all right, so let's get started. Okay, so I'll start off with the basic example, which is how to break constraints over time uh, by just a simple animation. So I'll take a grid and uh, if you want, a, a good break pattern, then what you should do is you keep the rows and columns to two. I'll make it slightly smaller and take a remesh. So this will give you like a properly triangulated mesh, which generally gives you better uh, like fracture patterns. Okay. And then I'm going to select like the corner points uh, as pins. So I'll press two. And I'll select one and two over here and we'll do a group and I'll call it uh, pins. Okay. Now let's say uh, the first thing I want to do is I just want to break the pins over time. Okay. So we'll start off with that and then we'll do more complex stuff. So I'm going to take a cloth solver. Sorry. I'm going to take the configure cloth first of all, and we'll just configure this to cloth. And uh, the one thing is you can, you can set up pins within uh, this itself. Like you do get an anim you do get an option here, which is called pin points, or you can take a separate vellum constraint and set up pins over there. Like either ways is fine. Like I can take another constraint option. So I can take vellum constraint and just connect like one and two. And this one I can say, uh, the group type should be points and we're going to change this to pin to target. Okay. And then I can just select pins. So you can see like it generated like these two small blue dots, which donate, which denotes your pins. And then I can just take, a, uh, I can take the vellum solver and this should work. So if I just press play, we should get a simple cloth animation. Yeah. Okay. Hold on a second. Yeah. This is like a viewport issue. Like, so if I just change the parameters once it goes away. Yeah. So this is a fairly heavy, uh, let's do one thing. I'm going to just lower this count a little bit. So it's not that heavy. It'll just solve a little faster. Okay. So we have that. Now the question is I, what I want to do is I want to break this over time. Okay. Uh, let's also do one thing. I'm going to take this and, you know, just transform it. So it's a little up here and I'll just generate a ground for this. So when it drops, it just drops to the ground, which will look a little better. Okay. So now the question is how do you break this? So the one thing I noticed is that when you're setting up a pin constraint, the pin type, if it is kept to permanent, it doesn't seem to break. Like you have to keep it to soft. So I'll keep it to soft and then I'll come back and change it again. Okay. So if you keep it to soft, you get like, it's the same thing, 
except then the the constraints seem to break better let's do one thing let's try one more thing i'm going to turn this off i'll take a grid i'll connect that to collision make it slightly bigger i'll increase the number of segments just to see if the bounce goes away yeah it went away a little bit okay so how do you break uh, constraints so what you need to do is you come into the vellum solver and you will find something called if you type vellum over here now when you come inside the vellum solver you are actually at dynamics level like you can see it's saying dynamics over here so you can do a few things over here so uh, if you type vellum you'll get something called vellum constraint property okay and if you connect the vellum constraint property and then we can turn on the break threshold and the break type and if i make this zero and if you press play you'll see it falls so which is which is basically what we wanted so what happens is this overrides whatever properties you have in your constraint level so what you can do is you can animate this so if i keep this high and let's press play yeah so the stretch is like the stretch stress is initially too much so it's breaking already so let's get it to 1 and see if it doesn't break okay so this is good so what i can do is let's turn off the dynamics temporarily i'll come to about 50 we'll set a keyframe and then i'll come a little further and i'll make it zero and so what this will do is if i press play if you've done everything right it will break So yeah so let's say if you also put in like a sphere or something in there for collision let's try something let's take a let's take a pig head and we'll just add that in yeah so let me just I'll just take a transform just move it up here yeah and then we can merge these together so if we press play we should get Yeah, so it falls on that, and then it just, you know, completely covers it. So this part is fairly simple. So what you have to do is once you've set up your constraints, you just come in here and you specify like the value. So you can do a lot of things. Like you can, if you want to control, if you want to modify stiffness over time, you can do stuff like that. Like if I turn on stiffness, then uh, the stiffness value is too low now. Yeah, so it just falls. See. Yeah but anyways the point is like you can modify from here so just do a little bit of r&d and you'll kind of figure out what needs to be done anyway so this is this is lesson number 1 this is how to break constraints via animation now uh, the next one is uh, where it becomes a little more complex which is uh, uh, let's say if we want to sort of fracture this so what you can do is um, Okay but before that I just wanted to cover like one more thing which is if I come into the constraints and let's say if we change this from soft to permanent and now if I press play then you can see nothing happens it doesn't break okay so as I had said like you have to keep it to soft like even if you keep it to stopped it doesn't break So if you want pins to break you have to keep them to soft. See nothing happens. Okay so I'm going to keep it to permanent right now. What we'll do instead is after the remesh I'm going to take an edge fracture. Okay so I'm going to take an edge fracture and I'm going to break this. So let's break this. I'll say show geometry and primitives. Yeah okay. So we have this and then if we press play right now i should basically get you know that happening so what we'll do is we're going to take another vellum constraint and we're going to create yeah it'll try to connect uh, the which is this is also fine like if this last point is meant for collision anyways so even if this comes in here and that flows in that's okay as well okay so i'm going to take the vellum constraint 
and we're going to change this to stitches okay and we're going to use uh, points and take uh, take new points not origin points now uh, the better thing to use is the weld option because what happens with the stitch is uh, like if I press play now this will actually get animated okay, like there's a good chance this will break yeah see there you go so because that value is still in there it breaks you know this as well because it will break anything that is breakable so what you can do is like uh, the stitch seem to work work fairly good this time around but you can also use weld points because weld points does it a little bit better okay like if you look at weld points so weld point doesn't generate the gaps in the middle but the problem with weld points is that it doesn't break either okay like it's very difficult to break weld points like i tried uh, multiple options and stitch breaks a lot easier than weld points okay so with weld points you have to play around a lot more okay so which is why i use stitch but then as i said the issue with stitch points is that it it does tend to generate these gaps in there now here what you can do which is interesting is like if I come into this and animate it slightly differently like if I come in here and then it starts to break uh, let's not take it to zero let's do one thing let's take it slightly higher what value is like this is one right so let's make this uh, 0 0.05 and then I'll set another keyframe and then I'll set a third one and bring it back to one so what it should technically do is it should break it and then halfway through the break it should stitch up again okay like that's that's basically what we want but let's see if it works or not it has to be done fairly quickly like if they break apart too fast then they're not going to stitch up again you know so that's not going to happen see so it starts to break and then it stops so if you keep a value of zero it just breaks completely like immediately everything just falls apart but if you keep a value where it slowly starts to tear apart and then if you bring the values back up so whatever hasn't detached will you know remain connected so you can do like fancy stuff like this where it sort of breaks a little bit or tears apart a little bit but the rest of it remains connected so you can do things like that which becomes a little more interesting Okay, so this is as far as, you know, animating values is concerned. Okay, so I'll, I'll save this file. I'll upload it again. So I'll save this as uh, vellum animate and we'll make a new one. And what I want to do is, uh, let's say we want to set up vellum based on, like we want to break things based on uh, attribute transfer. So what you can do is we'll again start off with a grid and the same setup so two and two and i'll make it smaller now when you want to do like a animated attribute value you have to go to dop you have to you have to go to dops you can't do it here so we'll take a remesh and just make it slightly finer i'll do an edge fracture so Oh, sorry, wrong thing to turn on. Yeah. Okay, let's increase that. And uh, what you want to do is the first thing we do is I'm just going to select this. I'll also create like a pig. So I'll create the pig. Let's keep that. Yeah, make it slightly bigger. So the way it works is you just come in here, you come to Bellum and you click on vellum cloth okay so that will generate like a full setup for you and it will go into dops so there you go so it's created like an auto dop network and uh, it's also outputted the cloth here separately okay so in here in the main grid what it's done is it just adds like a cloth constraint the way we normally do it and then outputs the geometry and the constraints 
and if we play this and okay let's also do one thing let's take the test geometry and make it a surface collider okay so if if you play this it will just fall down and then it will break right so now what we do is we can come into the cloth and then i can take a constraint so we'll take a vellum constraint and i will set this to uh, weld points and we'll pick up We'll set it to points. I'll pick up new points. Okay. So this is fine. Now what it does is, if you come into weld points, you'll notice that it has it generates. Uh, let's also do one thing. Let's try turning on the break threshold. Yeah. So when you turn on break threshold, and we'll keep the value fairly high, so it doesn't break. So when you turn on break threshold, it generates an attribute called break threshold. And that is the attribute that we can use. So the way it works is, it's fairly simple. Okay, like if you come into your autodop network, press L, this middle bit over here, which says particle forces, that's where we can connect a SOP solver. Okay, so take a SOP solver and we'll plug that in. And then if we take the DOP geometry and I create like, a, let's say if we just create a wrangle and I'll generate an attribute called F at break. Yeah, hopefully the spelling is correct is equal to zero. And if I just connect that in, if you press play now, everything should break. Yeah, like almost immediately. So what we can do instead is if I take, uh, let's say if we take a grid and I'm going to make it vertical yeah, like that. And let's increase the number of points on this. And this has the attribute of zero. And I'm just going to take a transform and we will animate this. So all it has to do is uh, let me just, let me turn off the dynamics. Yeah, so let's just keep it here and yeah, let's let's come to about 70 and I'll bring it back to zero. So we get this and then I can take an attribute transfer and we'll transfer like these values over here. And what I want to transfer is the break threshold. And let's see if we can visualize this. So we'll just press X. And what I want to visualize is the break threshold. So we'll just come in here and type in. Yeah, you can see the whole thing coming in. See, like when you see, there you go. You can see that little line sort of. So that's what is going to break the whole thing for me. And if I do this, if I've done this right, and if I come up and press play, then after it falls, when that value goes through, you might get, see, there you go. It's very slight right now, but you're getting that break happening. So if we press play, you'll see See, when that starts to go through, you can see the wave kind of passing through it and everything kind of breaks, but the value is too, like it needs to bleed out more. Okay. So let's just take this and increase it or like, you know, blend it out a little bit more. So if you press play now, it should be better. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so this is how you can break. So yeah, so this is how you can break constraints using uh, like an attribute transfer. So this is example number two. So I'll just save this as uh, vellum attributes. Okay. Okay, the third one that I want to do is uh, 
basically how to dynamically generate constraints and this is this is actually fairly simple like it, it was surprisingly simple so what you do is uh, i'll do the ball example which i had done so let's say like uh, you want a string to dynamically attach to uh, an object and then lift it up okay that's basically what i want to do so let's start off with a geometry i'll take a line and I'm going to take a sphere. So the sphere is just for placing. Okay. I'm going to like make it really small. I'll take a transform and I'll animate this. So what I want to do is let's say we start here, do an alt click and then I'll move like sideways like that. And then just, you know, let's, let's keep it here for a second. And then it just sort of moves up like that. So we go sideways and then move up. And then I'll take the line, I'll make it minus one, like so it goes downwards. And I'll do a copy to points. And this just copies onto the sphere. So what you have is this line basically getting animated. Now what I need to do is I need to increase the number of points on this line. Also increase the length of it. And I want to group the first point and the last point, but separately. So the first point uh, is zero and this will be called pin. And then I want this last point as a glue point. Okay. So I'm going to take a group by range. So this is a nice little trick. If you want to select the first point and the last point, or you want to select stuff in the middle as well, what you do is uh, keep the group type to points. And then the start value goes to one and the end value goes to one. So this selects everything in the middle and then you say invert range and that will select the first and the last, but we only want to select the last point. So just take the end value to one. Okay. So that just selects the last point and then we'll call this glue. Okay. So this is basically it. Okay. Now uh, let's set up the value. Let's set up the constraints for this. So this will be hair. So we'll just do vellum hair. And what you want to do is I want to take, uh, I want to take the pin type and say match to animation. And this will be, no pin to animation should be, hold on. Am I making a mistake here? Yeah, change this to points. There you go. Okay. Yeah, so just come in here and this will be, this will be pin. Okay. And then we'll take the solver. Okay. And let's connect this and press play once to see what we're getting. Okay. So I'll take this. I'll press play. Okay. Like good God, man. Every single time. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Let's increase the stiffness a little bit over here. And let's increase the damping ratio for the bend values. So, what I realize is the more number of points you have, the more difficult it becomes to control. So, what you want to do is like play with lesser points and then resample it later. Okay. So, like let's increase this. I think the the stiffness should help. Yeah, the stiffness helps. It still does a little bouncy bouncy, but there you go. Like it's better than. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So this is uh, setting up the string. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to set up like a sphere, which is going to fall down. So we'll take a sphere and I'll make it slightly smaller. And this will be polygon. We'll take about three of them. And what I'll do is I'm going to press two and select the top point and create a group for it. And this will be called glue. Okay. Then we do the same thing. So take a cloth. Okay. So we'll do vellum configure cloth and also take a transform and move it up. 
So let's just take this up a little bit. And if we just test the cloth, then we should get, okay. Yeah, what you want to do is turn on the uh, collision. Yeah. So that's basically what we're getting. Okay. So now let's merge everything together. So we'll take a merge, we'll take two merge. So control C, control V. And this comes in here. And this goes in there. Okay, and then let's do one thing. Let's take the animation, push it ahead a little bit. Yeah. And let's do one more thing. I'm going to take a transform and just sort of move the whole thing up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what I need to do now is the final thing, which is we need to set up the glue constraint. So the way that works is we're going to set it up inside the solver. Because what it allows us to do is inside the solver, we can dynamically set up constraints over time. Okay, so you don't need to do too much. Just come in here and take a vellum constraint. And on top of it, you'll have an option which says on creation frame, each frame or each sub step. And you'll notice that this option is missing here at SOP level. Like at SOP level, you don't get that. Yeah, because SOP doesn't allow you to do stuff dynamically. So you just say on each frame and we'll plug this in and we'll set this to glue. And the group type is points and we want to select glue. So this has a glue point and that has a glue point. So which is what we want. And then I'll just increase the search distance. So they both get like a little bit of time to search. And then hopefully if I've done everything right, see, there you go. Okay. Like the search distance was a bit too much, but it picked it up. Okay. Now, one thing that you can do is if you don't want this to sort of remain compressed is I can come into the cloth and I can lower the stiffness down to like a thousand. So what this will do is it sort of, when it picks it up, it kind of re like, you know, it doesn't remain like that. Okay, hold on. Let's try to go lower. Let's try a hundred. Whoa. Okay. Oh yeah. It still caught it, but there you go. Yeah. So you can try different things, but I don't think that's working. Let's increase the damping ratio. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, so you can sort of like play around with the values and get like different results. Yeah. See, so now it's sort of returning back to shape a little bit. It doesn't remain as compressed. Yeah. So, but what I think what we need to do is we need to come into the glue and like lower the search distance so that it doesn't like pick it up from just anywhere. Yeah. There you go. Now it picked it up exactly from that point. Yeah, and see, now it sort of came back to shape. So yeah, so that's basically it. Okay, now the fourth example, which I was talking about, uh, I'll do it later, or I'll just attach the file with this. Uh, this is a fairly long video anyways, I think this will be about 30 minutes. So I don't want to stretch it out too much. Uh, so what I'll do is like the final example, which I had put up on Instagram a few days ago or yesterday, which is those, which was like those two spheres attached and having strings in the middle. I'll do, I'll put up the file for that. And maybe later on, because there are a few more things I still need to, uh, I still need to figure out, uh, which is, uh, I still haven't figured out how to get a continuous emission coming into uh, vellum, like if you're doing like a particle emission and that needs to convert to grains continuously, it I can't seem to figure out how to do that. Like that's one issue. And I also want to try uh, something more complex with cloth. So I want to take something like from Marvelous Designer, like 
something that's more heavy duty and then try and you know put that on a character and see how well it simulates because that's that would be a good enough example to see what uh, you know what Wellem can actually do like the basic stuff of like a cloth falling on something is silly okay, you if you want to use it uh, you might as well use it for something more complex so I'll try doing that and see how well it works but anyways like the basic stuff is fairly simple and you can do most of it at SOP level just the attribute transfer stuff needs to be done through DOPS so you can't like that stuff needs to be done there but the rest of it a majority of it you can do uh, here uh, the one more thing I think I need to figure out is the balloon stuff you know like how to inflate objects over time but I'll figure that out so once I do that we'll do I'll do another you know slightly more advanced vellum uh, lesson but yeah I'll, I'll attach all these three files for download if you have any questions regarding these I don't think there should be but if you have you can ask me um, and uh, yeah that's basically it